Here is my new top three ESP32 DIY projects. And let's start with the first one, which is an ESP32 web server that allows you to see the temperature and the humidity of the area. So in this project, you will need an ESP32 microcontroller and the DHT sensor. So this is called DHT11, but you could use the DHT22 with the same way. The DHT sensor has three pins. The minus pin or the GND goes to the GND. The VCC goes to the 5 volt pin of the ESP32 microcontroller. And finally, we can get the temperature and the humidity from its signal pin. You have to connect this pin to one of the GPIO pins, like the GPIO pin number 26. And it is number 10 from this side. Now we can move on to the code. We can open up the sketch using the Arduino IDE. And let's explain it a bit. On top, we are including the libraries that we need, like the Wi Fi library, the web server. And these libraries are built in, you don't have to install it externally. But the DHT sensor library is not built in, you have to search for it under the library manager. Just search for the name DHT sensor library. And here's the library with the same name. Make sure to hit install. And once you install it, we can close this window. Now we have two variables that you have to change, like the SID and password. Basically, the ESP32 board needs the information about the router, which are the SID and password. And then you could use all of the devices that are connected to the same network. You simply need to type in the IP address of the board and it will display the information about the temperature and the humidity. The next things that we have to change is the GPIO pin. In our case, I've used the GPIO pin number 26. If you have used it another one, like 4, make sure to type it. And the second parameter is the type of the DHT sensor. For me, I have DHT11. And that's pretty much it. Make sure to select the kind of board that you have and the port of the USB cable. I have an ODMCU 32 s and the port is COM6. And let's hit upload. Once you get the message connecting, you have to hold down the boot key. After that, we have to get the IP address of the ESP32 microcontroller because each device has an IP address that we can use on our smartphone to get the DHT values. And to do that, we can open up the serial monitor. Sometimes you have to reset the port. And there you go. Now it is connected. And this is the IP address. If you haven't got these messages, make sure that you are using the same baud rate, 115.200. Let's copy this IP address using Ctrl C. Then we have to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network, which is called My Network. And let's open up a browser like Google Chrome and paste the IP value and hit enter. And yep, we have these values. The temperature is 18.4 and this page is refreshed each four seconds. We have this content equals four that allows us to refresh the web page each four seconds. The same thing, you could get these values from a smartphone. Just write the same IP address and enter this page. And there you go, we have the same values of the temperature and the humidity. But the only problem is that this IP address may change. Luckily, we have used another library that is called ESP and DNS. And it allows you to get the same web page or the web server by typing this name esp32.local. So let's try it. We can write ESP32 or any name you put under this mdns.begin function, then dot local. And there you go, here's the web page. It's a DHT web server. Second, we have the Open Weather Map API, which allows you to get your current weather state. And there are so many services that you can pick up, like the Road Risk API. Today we will focus on the first one that returns the current weather data and we are going to display it using this LCD display. By the way, you can download the project files from the link under the video description by going to code and download it as a zip file. You will find the circuit schematic as well as the sketch that is responsible for sending this request. But first of all, let's understand how this API works. Let's open up the documentation. As you can see, we have the URL that we have talked about and you will need to add few parameters 
like the latitude and the longitude, which is your location credentials. To get these two values, we can open up Google Maps and select the location that we want, like India. When you right click with the mouse, we have these two values, which are the latitude and the longitude. I'm going to copy them and let's open up a text editor. And the second value is the longitude that we're going to use. Some APIs require some sort of key that we need to put in this link so that we can use this service. But don't worry, it is free. You only have to log in using an email and password. Then let's select my API keys. And here it is. Let's copy it and paste it right here so that we can use it in our code. But before that, I want to test the API using a web browser like Microsoft Edge. Let's get back to the documentation and copy the URL using Ctrl C and open up a new tab. As I said, we have to provide it with the API key. Next, we have the latitude, which is this value. Make sure to replace it with this parameter. And finally, the longitude. Now, if we enter this URL, and there you go, we have a JSON format that contains few information about the weather in India, like the description, so we have few clouds. There are other measurements like the temperature, as well as the uh, humidity and the pressure. Now that we know how this API works, let's check out the circuit schematic diagram. As I said, I'm going to use the LCD display that comes with the I2C module. We're going to use it to display the information that we want, like the description of the weather, as well as the temperature and the humidity. First, you have to connect the GND to the GND and the VCC to the 5V pin to power up the module. Then we have two more pins, the SDA, gets connected to the SDA of the board and it is the GPIO pin number 21 the SEL goes to the SEL like this I've already connected the pins using female to female jumper wires and let's open up the sketch on top we have the libraries that we need like the Wi-Fi library, the HTTP client to send the request these two are built in, you don't have to install them and the last two libraries are not built in you have to go to the library manager and search for the Arduino JSON library which allows us to extract the information that we need from the JSON format. Just write the name Arduino JSON like that. And here it is. We've already installed it in our previous video. And the second library is Liquid Crystal I2C. Make sure to search for the same name, Liquid Crystal I2C. And it is this one by Frank. You could also use the OLED display, which allows you to print the information that you need. For me, I've created this object, which is the LCD that takes in three parameters. The first one is the address of the I2C module. This could be 0x3f or 0x27. If the first one doesn't work, make sure to change it to the second address. Then we have the size. I have 16 columns and two rows. Next, I'm going to put the SID and the password of the router. Then we have the URL that we have just copied. I decided to separate the other parameters so that you can change them very easily, like the API key. I'm going to copy my own. And finally, we have the location credentials. I'm going to use these two values, which is the location of India. And that's pretty much it. The rest of the code is connecting the ESP32 microcontroller to the network using the SID and password. Then we have the HTTP client object to send the request using the URL and the parameters that we have declared on top, like the API key. Next, we use HTTP.get to start the connection between the ESP32 microcontroller, which is the client, and the Open Weather Map API, which is the server side. This method returns a code. If it's a number that is greater than zero, that means everything is fine. And we can get the JSON format using HTTP.getString. And to retrieve the description, we use obg, and in these square brackets, we have to provide it with the path. We need to get the value of the weather key which is an array of elements. That's why we have to add zero. And finally, we pass in the description. The same thing applies for the other informations like the temperature as well as the humidity. Last but not least, we use the LCD object to display the description as well as the temperature and the humidity in Celsius and in percent. If something went wrong, we are going to print the message can't get data. And we are updating the weather state each 30 seconds if you want to get the updates each minute, make sure to change this to 60. And that's pretty much it.
that's how we can use all kind of APIs you simply have to know the URL as well as the parameters that it needs now we can select the board and the port of the USB cable which is COM11 I have a Node MCU32S board let's hit OK and upload and once it's done compiling we have to hold down the boot key so that we can start uploading the sketch and there you go these are the weather information in India we have few clouds and the temperature is 38 uh, celsius the humidity is 16 percent and finally we have home automation we can control devices using the ESP32 from any device and we can use the push buttons first you have to download the project from the link under the description it is under my github account you will find the sketch file as well as the circuit schematic let's open it up as you can see I have connected four LEDs to the pins number 16 until number 19 if you want to control some high voltage devices you have to connect these to the relay module and on the other side I have connected a 220 ohm resistor to protect the LEDs and we finish up by connecting the other side to the GND then we'll be able to control these LEDs or the relay module with the help of the Wi-Fi capability that comes with the ESP32 board and you could use the manual switches that's why I have connected these four push buttons one lead goes to the ground and the other one to one of the GPIO pins for example I have connected the first push button to the pin number 12 the second one to the pin number 14, 26 and 27 I have mounted the ESP32 board on this breadboard so that we can easily connect these components now we can move on to the code and check how it works on top I have included some libraries that we need for this sketch the first one is the Wi-Fi library to connect it to the Wi-Fi network the next two libraries are used to create a web server that listens to clients so whenever you type in the IP address of the ESP32 microcontroller this server will show you the buttons in this case the ESP32 gets connected to a Wi-Fi network like the router network that's why we have to provide it with the SSID and password of the router as I said you have to type in the IP address of the ESP32 microcontroller and it allows you to get the buttons and the state of the LEDs the same thing applies for computers that are connected to the network but these two libraries are not built in you could download them from the link under the description so this is the link of the ESP async web server library you have to go to code and download it as a zip file the same thing for the async TCP library and go to sketch and include libraries as you can see we have the option using a zip file you could simply select the library from the downloads folder and hit open to install it I've already done that for these two libraries the last one is called ESP MDNS anyways you have to type in the SID and password of your Wi-Fi network then I have created this web server using the async web server library next we have created four devices using this kind of type tracked device and we pass in the properties for example the first LED has the ID 1 the pin is pin 16 and we can control it with the push button that is connected to the pin 12 by default all of the LEDs are off that's why I have added 0 by default and that's pretty much it so the rest of the code is responsible for displaying the HTML page and it is checking whether the LEDs are on or off under the setup function we have used the pin mode I highly recommend you to read this code so that you can understand how things work anyways once you change the SID and password we can select the kind of board that we are using for me it is a Node MCU32S and the port of the USB cable and let's hit upload once it's done uploading we have to get the IP address of the board and it is printed on the serial monitor that you can open up from this icon I have used the board rate 115200 make sure to select it then let's reset the board and here's the IP address as you can see it is connected to the network now we can copy it using Ctrl C and use a web browser like Google Chrome of course you have to be connected to the same network I've already done that and there you go we have the ESP32 smart home project we can turn on and off these LEDs the same thing we can use these push buttons 
and the state is updated. Also, we have this useful button that allows you to turn all of the LEDs off. Let's press it. And there you go, it is working. I think that's pretty much it, guys, for this video. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next one.